The Widow's Might by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. So let's talk about the historical background, first of all, of the short story. So the author was a feminist author. She wrote about the challenges of women in a patriarchal society. The story was written in 1911. This was a time where women were not even allowed to vote. When they were married, everything they owned belonged to the, to the husband. So we see how sexism is a key element in this story due to the historical context. The deeper meaning. So um, marriage at the time was a duty that all women had to take on. Being a wife and a mother were the only things that defined a woman. So a woman without a male companion was assumed to be weak and frail as seen in the short story as Mrs. McPherson is assumed to be um, fragile because of the death of her husband and so therefore the siblings feel obliged to um, take care of her because they assume that without someone to lean on, a woman is in incapable of being dependent. Themes. So the first theme is money slash the business world. The siblings worry about the costs and how much it would cost them to take care of their mother. They assume that she would need to be taken care of, as without a man, a woman is seen as weak, as mentioned before. They also want to profit from their father's death through the inheritance of his estate. Um, the mother is actually turns out to be the most intelligent when it comes to business, as we learn that she managed to turn the business of the farm around after years of neglect when her husband was in control. She has already made plans for her future and she's mapped out her savings accordingly and proved that she can be independent and that she doesn't need to be married for security. The next theme is female emancipation. Uh, the siblings and the lawyer assume that she will need to depend on, on the family. However, once she takes off the veil, we see that she has emancipated herself from such stereotypes of female behaviour. The veil symbolises how through her whole life, she has kept her true self and feelings hidden. Her voice had been taken away from her by society. Um, so she, we see how she has financial and emotional independence as she explains how she is going to take care of herself and in doing so, she assumes that independence from her family. Um, this, when she opens the blinds, this symbolizes her freedom as she has been let out of the cage, which is marriage and duty, and she is stepping out into the light. So this is a very symbolic moment as is the um, taking off of the veil. And then the third theme is obligation. The siblings do not want their mother to stay with them. They only suggest, they only make the suggestions because they feel obliged to as society demands that women must be taken care of due to their um, fragility. Uh, the mother has completed her duty and she has been a faithful wife and mother. That is why she says, um, I'm going to do what I never did before. I'm going to live. This suggests that while she was chained to her marriage, she was not really living. So we see that one of the author's messages, which is that without liberty and independence, one is not truly alive. Characters. So the first character is Mrs. McPherson. Um, this is the mother. At first, she is a mystery, um, but then she reveals herself to be a free and independent woman, capable of forming her own thoughts and opinions, despite what society has assumed from her. Um, she rejects her children, and she even claims that she has no ties to them anymore, as she is tired of duty. She has already completed her duty as a mother and as a wife. 
and she has waited so long to be free, so now she is determined to not let them take away that freedom and that liberty from her by um, assuming the role of her new almost guardian to keep her safe because as mentioned before without a male companion a woman is seen as weak and so she would need that security from them but she proves in the end that they are wrong to assume that and then we have James he is the son and he has a clear sense of duty but uh, despite this, he shows little love or empathy towards his mother and siblings. He patronises his mother and believes that she is weak and incapable of being independent. This is ironic, as he is her son, yet he treats her like a small child. James tries to take on the role of head as head of the family now that his father has died, but his mother refuses to let him, and we see that uh, we see a clear battle between the two um, towards the end of the short story. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching.